I think our age is obsessed by the notion of originality and uniqueness. But I would like to show you how employing our nat natural tendency to copy, we are in a way all copycats, we can make beautiful things and things with great identity. I think the notion of identity in the past was tied to the idea of belonging to a group. You shared values, you share manners and habits, you share ways of dressing or eating. So identity was belonging. But somehow in the modern age, we introduce a different idea. The idea that to, be, to have identity means to be original, something like I'm not like everybody else, like the Song of the Kings from the 67. Today, we generated this word influencer. The word itself tells that you, are mo you have more identity as much uh, number of people you reach and as much your image gets retransmitted. Uh, FedEx and Clara Ferragni are in a way this narcissistic image, which is it's an interesting phenomenon, but somehow is not like in the past. It's almost the contrary. But I think this obsession is used today also in a paradoxical way by great companies. You now everybody tells you, think different, think out of the box, be original, be yourself. And the idea to buying uh, um, a shoe, a globalized product, and be yourself is, in a way, funny. The new pornographers, my favorite rock group, made the record whose name was Mass Romantic. Are we in a mass romantic age? In a way, romanticism stated the individual, but today, thousands of girls would like to be like Avril Lavigne all over the world. So this is our age. Everybody wants to be unique, but somehow this repetition shows that we're not unique at all. These are a group of photographers and stylists who go around the cities of Europe you know, Rotterdam or Milano, pick up people, they bring them to the studio, and they take pictures of them. So uh, the, the names are very funny, volunteers, <laughs> cappuccino girls, Pokemon, so on. So the 12 Chinozuki of each of us is unique, at least have 12 of Sosias. Even casuality, like these people leaving their um, jacket out or sh shirt, somehow show the paradoxical state of our society. Going to the Vespa to my polytechnic, I teach there, I look around and I see houses. In one of these houses, even my grandmother used to live. But in a way, the facades and the interface between the individuality of people dwelling there and the, 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 the phenomenon of the city. In a way, a city is something which has to survive to people, but also to be the backdrop of everybody's life. So in a way, repetition, which can be boring, these buildings have a family air, I would say, is also what makes a city. We could not conceive a city made out of totally singular buildings. This mechanism of repetition goes through a very important phenomenon, which is called gossip. You know, we, we use the word gossip in a negative way, but in a way, um, there was Dan Sperber, he's a um, scientist, he was talking about contagious ideas and the epidemiology of representations, like figures or recipes would contaminate. And in this voyage, you start to have variation. I don't know who invented the keep calm and carry on meme, but of course it would be very rich, but how many variations of it we could count? The repetition also sometimes generate a continuous modification, like a metamorphosis. During barbarian times, uh, the barbarians used to copy Roman coins, but then the copy of the copy of the copy somehow lost the original icon, maybe the Caesar's head or a carriage, and became an abstract figure. So repetition will also be in change. Can we make a history of what we could call material culture like a history of evolution? You know, to see how objects change in time in a sort of collective fashion? But we have to remember that evolution is non-linear. It's not a, a, a linear, but Let's say mistake is fundamental in biology. Many dead branches, 99% of the animals who lived on this earth have dead now. So to get there, 
you need a lot of fail and near misses. I just took a picture on my desk table before coming here and I packed up all the study models we did for a competition for a, an office building. This is all the things we used to work. And then I did a fun thing. I took all my sketches and I put them in some kind of tree-like evolutionary line and of course the survival of the fittest. The, the model is the final model we gave to the competition. In 2012, there was a Biennale exposition in Venice, it was called Common Ground. I love this idea of common ground. And to stress the idea that we share some kind of culture, this is what permits communication, I did an installation, very quick one. Half of it was done by my private collection. I'm a, almost a serial um, put collector of things. I went to the National Museum and got some series of insects. I show these boxes but also showed these chapati rolling pills. In, from Rajasthan, you use them to make the bread, the chapati bread, and each village have a slight color variation of it. My model submarines, even the history of technique is a history of elaborating one shape, what we know as an airplane, is in a way by trial and misses. Monuments as some kind of collective culture, souvenir monuments in this case. So I show all these things in big, um, cup boards like it would be a museum and inside the other side looked like an Italian piazza. All the buildings will look a little bit different but a little bit the same. Finally, I just want to spot up a case. Uh, many years ago I had the luck to win a competition to do a big industrial area in Venice. It was called the Jungans Factory. I did the whole master plan of the Venice but one of the buildings got really famous and published all over the world. It was a simple house made of plaster. It was a contemporary house. And in a way, what we were trying to do, it was to do something which looked contemporary, not imitation, but something if you squint your eye, you could see beyond it any building in the Judeca. We didn't find the right to do just some kind of one statement. I think Venice is a collective artifact. Did we try to do picturesque? Did we try to do Mondrian? I don't know yet. But somehow, finally, this motive I used, which was really related to a reinterpretation of the wide wind of Cornish of Venice, it was spread out contagiously. And this is probably even in Padova, I took it from the train. All these are buildings all over Europe. We somehow picked up this motive of the white Cornish and the regular windows. In, uh, I went to Austria some time ago and they say, oh, these are the Zucchi windows, they call them <laughs> Zucchi windows. But there's always um, an original animal, like the horse is begin with the little um, uh, progenitore, somehow the ancestor, the white windows are not mine. I copied them from this building. This is building from the 60s done by Gabete Isola is actually in Piedmont. So something which is considered mine is not mine at all. But sometimes it worked in my situation. It was very referred. So I went up to pick this phrase of Paul Valéry, my favorite author, who says, nothing more original, nothing more yourself than feeding yourself with others. But you have to digest them. The lion is made out of assimilated sheep. A lion made out of shit. Um, everybody's talking, be different, be original, think your ideas, be out of the box. But there's one author I love, he's called Douglas Tostader. He wrote a fantastic essay it's called Variations on a Theme on the Crux of Creativity. He says, instead of always jumping here and there, to apply a small variation on something you know and to follow it with consistency, you can get to incredible scientific and artistic discoveries variation on a theme. So when you do something which is somehow good and in a way has a strong image, is repeated. This totally unexpectedly, that was a building in Venice, it got repeated over and over again by painters or something. So we need shapes, we need forms. Forms are something we need to dialogue among each other. So let's make forms which are related to a place, but somehow they can be used in everyday communication. The ideal of architecture is to be the love background of our daily life. And of course, the survival of the fittest. Thank you very much.